If you want to become a clutch putter on the greens, you are going to love these 10 Dr. Bob Rotella putting tips. I'm here to tell you that lagging it up is a loser mentality. It's like signaling to the golf gods that I don't really want to make this putt. Instead, every putt is a green light putt. Quit trying to lag it up there. Now something Dr. Bob talks about inside putting out of your mind is that your first instinct is normally the right instinct. The old drive for show, putt for dough has gotten old, but unfortunately the saying is still true. Putting is everything. You can be the best ball striker in the world, but if you can't get the ball in the hole on the greens, that's even worse. I'd argue there's nothing more frustrating than bombing a drive, hitting a great iron, and then struggling to two putt on the greens. Dr. Bob Rotella is not only the godfather of sports psychology in the golf world, but he's also created some of the best selling golf books in the industry. In fact, he's the reason I really got started in this mental game of golf about 10 years ago. I went through my Amazon search history. I found that I started reading Dr. Bob in 2013. Ironically, nine years later, I've used a lot of his principles to help me become a plus two handicap, but also he inspired me to become a golf writer. Now it's been my career for the past five years. I've written millions of words about golf and even published two books. So Dr. Bob, you're the man. I appreciate all you've done and all the inspiration that you've shared with golfers around the world. Needless to say, he was really a trendsetter in the golf world because at the time, most people weren't talking about sports psychology. In fact, it was kind of a secret for a lot of players. People thought you were a head case if you worked with a sports psychologist, but clearly that myth has been dispelled. So today, let's go over the 10 best Dr. Bob Rotella putting tips so you can finally have confidence on the greens. Sure, it helps to have solid fundamentals, but at the end of the day, it's how quickly can you get the ball in the hole. Let's get into these 10 Dr. Bob Rotella putting tips. Tip number one from Dr. Bob is to pick a style of putter that works for you. Now this is crucial to me too because you need to look down at your putter and have confidence. Whether it's a $500 Scotty Cameron or something you bought used at a golf store, it just needs to give you confidence above all else. The cool thing with putting is that not much changes in terms of technology. With drivers, we've had a huge shift. In fact, you probably couldn't even play drivers from 10 years ago because there's been so many technological changes. But with putting, not much changes. It's just about getting the ball in the hole. We're not looking for more distance, we're just looking for more confidence. So step number one is finding a putter that you love, whether that's a blade, a mallet, or something in between, find a putter that when you look down at, gives you confidence. Number two is to stop caring about mechanics. There's one thing you can learn from watching professional golf is that there's no one way to make putts. Will Zalatoris versus Tiger Woods versus Ben Hogan versus Jack Nicklaus all have very different putting styles. Each style works for them though. That's why they were able to become some of the best golfers in the world. Find a style that works for you. While mechanics do play a small part, at the end of the day, it's really simple. It's just about getting the ball in the hole. Whether you take the club straight back, a little inside, a little outside, there's so many things that you can do in the stroke. The mechanics honestly hold a lot of people back. If you are looking to dial in your mechanics, my favorite tool is the Putting Tutor by Dave Pelz. Now this small little device it makes it great to establish your start line so you can figure out if you're pushing or pulling putts. Then you can use that to work on your fundamentals. But the good thing is, is that once you get your putting dialed in, it's not gonna change like your swing. It's something that usually kind of sticks with you. So work on your putting and find a style and putter that work for you, and then you can start making way more putts. Tip number three from Dr. Bob here is to give your mind a clear target. Now this tip has absolutely saved me. In fact, I actually worked with a sports psychologist before going to Q school in 2019 and actually told him, I said, sometimes I struggle over putts. I just don't feel like I communicate to my mind what the objective is and I get a little lost out there. And he says, give your mind a clear picture. Talk to yourself inside and actually break down the putt. Now, for example, when I have a putt, I will actually tell myself, Hey, this is 10 feet, it's uphill, it's left to right, we're gonna start it at the left edge and it's gonna die right in the center of the cup. Does it always do that? Of course not, it's golf. Giving your mind a clear picture will signal what the goal is. The mind loves to help you achieve your goals, but a lot of golfers don't give it a goal to achieve. So instead of saying, don't miss this putt, say, hey, I'm gonna make this putt in the middle, I'm gonna start it at this spot and I'm gonna hit it aggressively because it's uphill and it's going in. And this doesn't mean you're gonna make every putt, but you're setting yourself up for success. Number four is clutch. Have a routine to lean on. If you don't have a consistent putting routine, you are seriously. A pre-shot routine in the golf swing is one of the most important things you can do. And that also applies to putting too. The problem is, is that most people don't have a consistent routine and then wonder why they're not consistently good putter. A pre-shot routine doesn't happen just in golf either. Field goal kickers, NBA players when they're shooting free throws, 
all have routines. Golf isn't a reactionary game. You need to have a routine to set yourself up for success. When you have a consistent putting routine, you're able to block out some of those nerves, that internal chatter, and focus on what you want. Plus, the more you dial in your routine and practice, the more automatic you'll become on the course. Speaking of automatic, I love the look and shoot putting method by Automatic Golf. This putting system has transformed the way that I started putting and has dropped four shots per round since I adopted it in early 2021. I'll link to the card here talking about this system and I'll also provide more links in the description below. Tip number five is amazing and I think most golfers do not do this. It's committing to a read. How many times have you stood over a putt and be like, I can't tell, does this go right? Does it go left? Is it uphill? Is it downhill? We have that doubt and indecision and it is a signal to your mind that you are probably not gonna hit a great putt. Anytime I find myself with doubt, I find that I always leave the putt short, even if I do get the read right, because I'm only thinking about the break and I completely black out and forget about the speed. Even if it's not the right read, you're more likely to hit the putt solid and it actually has a chance to go in. But if you're standing over the putt, you're indecisive, you're taking longer, you're getting internal, you're probably gonna hit it short, you're not gonna commit to it, and you're not gonna make a lot of those putts. Now something Dr. Bob talks about inside putting out of your mind is that your first instinct is normally the right instinct. After playing for 20 plus years and getting back into tournament golf about six years ago, I could not agree more. Your first instinct in golf is typically right. If you think it's a nine iron into the green, it's probably a nine iron. If you think the putt breaks right to left, it probably breaks right to left. Now that doesn't mean that you're not gonna get some of them wrong, but my guess would be 90% of the time, your first instinct is your right instinct. Hey, I'm curious, what's the best putting tip you've ever received? Hit the comments down below, I'd love to know. The next putting tip is something that every golfer almost needs to plaster on their putter as a constant reminder. What is this tip? Try to make every single putt. Quit trying to lag it up there. So many players when they're 30 or 40 or 50 feet away, even say to their plant partners, don't worry, I'm just trying to lag it up. I'm here to tell you that lagging it up is a loser mentality. It's like signaling to the golf gods that I don't really want to make this putt. Instead, every putt is a green light putt. Quit trying to lag it up there. Now, why is this so important? Because you have to think about what happens if you do miss. Now, statistically from 30 plus feet, you're not gonna make a lot of putts. In fact, you're probably more likely to three putt based on the PGA Tour scoring statistics. But that doesn't mean some putts can't go in. The problem is, is that so many golfers just try and lag it up and never give it a chance. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying you need to hit every putt five feet by the hole just to say, I got it there. You wanna have the right mindset going into the putt. Look, have you ever made a 30 foot putt, a 50 foot putt, maybe longer? Chances are you have. So there is proof that you actually can make this putt. But when you go into it with the right mindset, you can absolutely make some of these putts. But even if you don't, the misses are better. The problem with trying to lag it inside a three foot circle is that your misses are gonna become three, four, five, six feet, versus if you're trying to make every putt, your misses might be one, two, or three feet. And when you have those two or three footers, they're gonna be a lot easier to make than those four, five, and six footers. Quit trying to lag it up, and I promise you're gonna make more putts. The next tip is to stop dwelling on missed putts. Look, missing putts is part of the game. It's gonna happen, whether you're Tiger Woods or a 30 handicap, missing putts is part of the game. In fact, the PGA Tour average from eight feet is only 50%. That's right, the best golfers in the world with the best equipment, the best instructors on the best screens only make half of their putts from eight feet. So yes, missing putts does happen a lot, but what you do when you miss putts is the next step. So many golfers get frustrated when they miss an eight footer or a 12 footer or a 20 footer, when in reality, you're probably not statistically supposed to make that putt. So quit dwelling on the putts that you miss, even if they're ones you quote unquote should make. Stop dwelling because it's just gonna give your mind a negative image of you as a putter. Instead, focus on the putts you make. Focus on all the putts you've made over your entire life. Constantly remind yourself that you are a good putter. It's crucial to go into each putt with the mindset that you can make it. The next tip is to putt like you don't care. How many times have you just walked up to the ball, kind of been nonchalant about it, and ended up making it? Versus that four footer that you really wanted to make to shoot your best score, to beat your buddies, and you ended up missing it. A lot of times we put so much pressure on ourselves that we actually get tight, we get constricted, and we try and guide the putter. And that usually doesn't end well. So stop caring. Now that doesn't mean you should skip a pre-shot routine and have a don't give a shit attitude, 
but you can't try too hard. It's not gonna help. The golf gods aren't gonna give you any extra bonus points for trying so hard. So go up there, focus on your routine, pick your spot and let it go. The second to last Dr. Bob Rotella putting tip here is to play more golf on the course. Now practice is great. We obviously needed to work on our fundamentals, dial in our routine, get to know our distances. But with putting specifically, we need to get ourselves in pressure situations. It's really easy when you're on the putting green to just not really care and just kind of be lackadaisical up there. But what I found is when I got back into tournament golf in 2016 is that I was not putting those short ones out enough in practice. And by the time I got to tournaments, I was really nervous over those three, four, five footers. So in my practice rounds, in my casual rounds outside of tournaments, I was always finishing out the putts. That way, when you do get into a pressure situation, whether it's a club championship, a tournament, or just trying to win some money from your friends, you are prepared. So practice like you play. The final tip from Dr. Bob is to find peace on the golf course. This is really ironic to me because I was rereading Putting Out of Your Mind for this video, and I realized that the section in my book was actually called Peaceful Putting because I found that most of us get so stressed out on the greens that we really set ourselves up for failure. So if you wanna become a better putter, you have to just let go. You can't try and control everything, control every inch of your swing, get overly complicated, mechanical. You have to sometimes just let go. I love this quote from Dr. Bob. The golf course has to be your sanctuary, the thing you love, and the thing you can't be afraid of messing up. Too many golfers are trying not to screw up and that's getting in the way of actually performing their best. So stop caring so much, enjoy yourself, be grateful for the golf course. The course does have to be your sanctuary. That's supposed to be your place to enjoy life, to get out, to forget about the real world. If you're over every putt thinking it's life or death, chances are you're never gonna reach your putting potential. So sometimes you just gotta let go. Find peace on the greens, and I promise you're gonna make more putts. Hopefully you enjoyed those 10 Dr. Bob Rotella putting tips, and highly recommend you check out Putting Out of Your Mind. It's a great book with a ton of principles that you can put into your game immediately. Plus, don't forget to check out Wicked Smart Golf. Inside my book, I have 111 ways to help you play better golf without changing your swing. One of those entire sections is all about putting. Becoming a great putter is so much easier than trying to overhaul and create a perfect swing. Plus, when you develop a good putting routine and find a putter you like, things don't really change too often. And if you record your stroke regularly and, you, and if you use training aids like a putting mirror or the putting tutor, it's pretty easy to check in on your stroke every week or two weeks to make sure nothing's changed. And that way you're always dialed in when you need to make putts. Learn more about my favorite putting system, check out the Look and Shoot putting system down below. I've also linked to it in the cards here because I am convinced it is the best way to help you make more putts. It's all about learning how to use your conscious with your subconscious to just let go and putt out of your mind. Don't forget, putting represents anywhere from 30 to 50% of all shots during the round. I'm counting the putts that you use on the fringe. Well, hopefully you're putting from the fringe sometimes. Sure, it's more fun to hit drivers on the range all day, but putting really is how you take your game to the next level. Now, I haven't had Dr. Bob on the podcast yet, but hopefully after sharing this video with him and maybe some inspiration about how he helped me become a golf writer, I'll have him on my podcast, Wicked Smart Golf. Probably didn't even know it, but you inspired me to quit my job and become a golf writer. Thanks again for watching this video. If you could, please give it a like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss any of these epic videos to help you play better without changing your swing. Thanks again for watching this video, and as always, I hope you have an epic day on the links.